Well, things are definitely interesting. I'm, uh, let's see, I'm trying to figure out here. So today I think what we're gonna do is, I've got this little chair over here. Well, let me back up a little bit. So I'm going to be moving. I don't know exactly when or where. There's a lot of details I'm still working out, but long story short, I'm getting rid of stuff. I had a dumpster out here last week, filled that thing up. Probably gonna get another one here sometime in the next short little while. And I'm going through my inventory of wheelchairs that I've been keeping around for parts and kind of putting together stuff and maybe trying to sell some of it. I don't know. I'm just, I'm in the process right now of trying to figure out what works and what doesn't. So in the process of going through everything and figuring out what I'm getting rid of and whatnot, we've got this little Pronto M51 here. You may remember this chair from such films as Power Soccer Clinic version 1.0 and Do Larger Tires Equal More Speed? Sorry, I couldn't resist. You might remember me from such self-help videos as Smoke Yourself Thin and Get Confident, Stupid. Anyways, I just stuck the batteries back in this thing. Uh, they use the little U1s. It's got an onboard charger. I, I do have the plastics for it. Originally, I got this chair to use as a, uh, like a soccer demo chair. So people could hop in it and run around and we'd zip tie one of the PVC soccer guards to the front of it. This thing uses an SPJ Plus. It's Invacare Electronics, which is also dynamic, AKA the Shark Controller. And, um, now it's a neutral at the moment. But the problem is this thing has a soccer tune on it. So we need to figure out how to put this back to a more um, usable profile or program. And when I got that chair like four years ago, I had to go to a mobility shop and borrow a programmer, but it took a very specific one. I had to go through their entire pile of programmers to find one that worked and then it had to be hooked up to a computer. I don't remember the software. I don't remember what the programmer was. All I know is the one that was supposed to work with that chair did not work. Then I had a thought. I built this thing a while back. So this is kind of a logic converter or data converter. Basically, it's got a nine pin serial um, connector on the back. As you can see, there's only three wires connected to it. And on the other end, we just have a normal three pin XLR jack. Now this was originally intended to program the bounder and it worked really good for that. This is what I use if I want to change programming on that. The bounder uses dynamic DX2 controls. So my thought is, since Invacare is also dynamic, maybe this thing will work. What it does is basically we've got ground, transmit, and receive pins on this. This little board, using some transistors and diodes and assorted little thingies, converts two line data communication, so one line for receive, one line for transmit, into a single line communication. So it takes, I believe it's the center pin, let's see here, I can look and see, yeah, I don't remember, but it converts that data to uh, power ground and a single data pin, so it'll transmit and receive over a single pin. Words are escaping me at the moment, but anyways, let's, uh, let's go grab that little chair, bring it in here, and see if this works. The nice thing with this chair is it has gearbox neutrals instead of brake disconnects. So it's very easy to push around when it's in neutral. Um, that is one handy thing. Like I said, I don't know if I'm selling this thing yet, but I need to get it back to a normal program so that, well, if I am gonna sell it, maybe I might use this as a backup chair because I'm probably gonna move somewhere that there's not a lot of space and I need to save some of that space or said space, whatever. Anyways, right now I'm, I'm kind of scatterbrained. Words are hard. Uh, let me grab the laptop that the software is on and let's see what happens when we hook it up. We've got this old Dell laptop here. This is one of those business ones from a long time ago. But the nice thing with this is it has a COM port on the back of it. Now I could potentially run a USB to COM port emulator, but when I was building this thing, I wanted to keep it as simple as possible. And sometimes those USB COM port emulators uh, present problems of their own. So. For proof of concept, I wanted to build that little interface strictly with serial. And then later on, if I felt led, we could change it up. But as you can see, I, uh, I haven't even bothered putting this in a connector or putting this in a box. Everything's just kind of loosely soldered on here. So, so let's just kind of dangle this right here. There we go. <laughs> and then we'll plug this into our COM port. Ah. 
Freaking Windows is suddenly doing updates. I have just about had it with Windows. Um, I know you can like pause updates and do all this stuff, but the computer I stream with, I, I don't really have too much personal data on that. Okay, remind me in three days. But the other day when I powered it up, all of my data was gone. Everything in the, my documents, the downloads, photos, all the personal fol folders are just missing. And I used the Windows backup feature to save it to another drive. All that was gone too. So aside from it randomly deciding that it's going to do updates and you can't do anything about it and things just disappearing, sometimes I turn it on and the wallpaper doesn't work. And it's like this on all my Windows computers, by the way, rant warning. Um, I'm, uh, I have to keep a Windows computer around for certain things, but like, I think I'm going to switch over to Linux. I, uh, I've tried it before and my consensus back at that point was, by the way, we're using this software called Wizard here. Let me open this up. My problem with Linux before was, well, you have to spend a lot of time trying to make it work as opposed to getting work done. But at this point, I'm so, so done with Windows. Um, okay, anyway, so this is, um, trying to be careful with these wires. This is, come on camera. Uh, Dynamic Wizard 5. So we're going to accept. Oh, hang on. There's a text message I have to reply to. Okay, I accept. There we go. Let's plug it into the charging port and see if it lets the magic smoke out. Can you see this? Yeah, we're plugging this in now. Turn it on. Okay, nothing's exploded yet. We're going to click on the software here. Ooh, it sees something. Read the program from connected controller. Connecting to controller, please wait. <gasps> controller connected. No way. Is it gonna work? Um, let's see, read the program. By the way, that's not a reflection, that's just some weird wallpaper. Holy garbage. Um, okay, so our weird, our weird little board works. Sweet. Cool. Well, this chair doesn't have any profiles. It's just, you know, the single, like, up and down. So let's see here. What we want to do is adjust our speeds. I believe this is rear-wheel drive. I don't know if all these settings are going to be applicable or not. Anyways, I'm going to play around with this. I'm super happy that this thing connects and works. Um... Uh, I don't know what chairs all it's compatible with. I've got a few Invicare and Dynamic Controls chairs around. I guess I could plug this in and test to see, but um, yeah. So let's see, maximum forward speed. So it's weird, it's got several programs. Rear wheel drive two pole, rear wheel drive four pole, center wheel drive three pole. Eh. Anyways, I'm gonna play around with this and let you know what I, what I can figure out. I'll be back. Okay, about three clicks later I found out. Active drive program is program three, which is center wheel drive. And we've got our acceleration here. Yeah, I set it pretty high. 175, 175 for turning and all that. So the forward acceleration wasn't too bad, but it's the turning speed that was an issue. So I think what I'm gonna need to do, I'm gonna grab a cushion for this thing and hop into it. Because trying to program these without sitting in the chair, it, whatever. I don't know if there's a default program. Oh, I guess these are pretty much defaults over here. Let's see, rear wheel drive two pull. So I'm just going to copy this column here because I'm sure this is like a stock-ish program. And then we'll copy over to this. Right, currently displayed program to controller. Okay. Writing to controller. I can't believe this works. Thank you, little circuit board. Beep. So I guess we're going to unhook this and uh, see if it's any different. Cool. So I ended up getting rid of my old quickie soccer chair that I had. Now that I've got access to a strike force, it was kind of unnecessary. Plus, it broke a motor shaft. That, I don't know, the, those old quickie S626 chairs, wait, is it 626? Yeah, anyways. Oh yeah, there's another one over there. Um, those old chairs, I don't know what it is with the gearboxes and the motor shafts, but they just keep rounding out. And uh, yeah, anyways. So as you can see, everything on top of this rack is empty. 
That one's maybe eh, 65% full. All the stuff back in that corner is gone. And I'm going through the last remaining chairs that I have. So all that being said, on that quickie soccer chair, I did an Arnett swap. And I, well, this is the controller that was on it and the joystick. But what I had to do, because it had a seating controller that wouldn't interface with Arnett, I had to make this little power adapter cable here. Well, that chair also had cooling fans on it. So I used the Arnett cables and put a couple switches in. One of these went over to the seating controller and the other one went to the fans. But check it out. See how one of these switches is set to on? That was the one for the seating controller. So four months ago when I moved in here, apparently I left the seating controller on and ran the batteries super dead. Um, they were okay. They're a few years old, but they were working good. I'm working on trying to recover them at this point. As you can see, they're not happy. I might have to pull out the manual battery charger and see if we can get these uh, brought back up. Yeah, it's only showing 1.7 volts. I've run this on a few cycles, but it keeps going into error modes and, well, yeah, that kind of happens with electronic chargers. That's one of the things with having a bunch of chairs and, well, I'm not blaming other people, but <laughs> what do the people help you move? Sometimes switches get flipped and things happen, or maybe I did it and I forgot, I don't know, but things like this can happen and now I've got a set of batteries that's probably not any good. Eh, gonna continue trying to recover these as I'm working on other stuff. We've, uh... Making pretty good amounts of progress here getting rid of stuff. I know it doesn't look like it, but when you're when you're mid uh, sorting or well, everything looks like it's a lot worse or a lot more cluttered as you're getting rid of things, but we're not doing too bad. We've got all of the crates that were up there. Those now fit into three three crates. And that's my goal is basically this entire room full of crates. I wanted to have no more than five or six left over. A lot of this stuff is things I haven't opened in like six years or something like that. People like to tell me, you have too much stuff. Why do you have it? What is it all? And I still have the same answer to that. <laughs> That's none of your business. But I'm in a spot now where I'm realizing that, well, kind of out of necessity, that I need to go a little bit more streamlined with everything. Oh, let's save this program before the battery dies. There we go. Save. Cool. Wizard 5 saves us again. Well, maybe it's the first time it saved us. I don't know. Right. Shut this thing down. Are you going to shut down or are you going to update? It's, it's still blinking. Is it going to turn off? Hey, it did. Hey, it turned off. Uh, there's there's nothing worse than when you turn on the computer to try and get something done and the computer's like Yeah, no, I, I understand that you think you want to do stuff, but you actually don't we know what's better So just sit back grab a cup of tea, and I'll be with you whenever I feel like it <laughs> While I'm working on other stuff we're going to Play a Lewis Rossman rant video He's always good to have on in the background Yeah, today what I'm working on is getting everything taken down off the walls, kind of going through stuff, going through the chairs and figuring out which ones I'm keeping, which ones I'm going to be selling or recycling or whatnot. And uh, yeah, I think maybe I said that earlier, but just kind of making a mental inventory of everything and figuring out what I need to do with it all because it's time to get rid of stuff. <laughs> Okay, so I'm sitting in this little thing. We are back to a much more stock profile, but in my opinion, this is actually kind of a dangerous setup because the deceleration is, um, let's see here, I'm trying to hang this off the side of the counter. The deceleration is way too slow. Chairs need to have a certain amount of braking when you let go of the joystick. If they coast for too long, that's when you run into walls and things. 
So, uh, let's change a couple more parameters on here. You can see our awesome setup here. So we're going to change forward acceleration. We're going to bump that up to 40 just because why not? Uh, forward deceleration, let's go 65 I guess. That's the problem with this is you just kind of have to guess and change a few things and keep going back around and doing stuff over again. I always like to make forward and reverse equal because for muscle memory, uh, when you know you're going forward at a certain speed, going backwards at the same speed, uh, it's, it's easier on your brain to keep that the same, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Oh, weird, I can actually move while it's connected. Turn deceleration seems okay. Uh, actually, we're gonna bump it up just a tiny bit after, right after I said it was okay. So 40, there we go. And right to chair. Beep. Okay, let's try this again. Come out of there, you. All right, let's see what we get now. Okay, that. Forward acceleration seems good. Now, if I was keeping this chair, I would keep that turning uh, turning rate about the same. I think for most people it might be a little much, so let's try turning this down and see what it does. Okay, we're on carpet, not a good idea for testing. Okay, that might actually be okay. Because the way these work with a single profile chair <laughs> um, the way these work with a single profile chair is all of the parameters are equally turned down when you use your speed adjustment here. So I think yeah I think that seems pretty good. Yeah okay so if someone else was going to use this chair I would just tell them to turn it down one click. But for me this is about right. I can actually turn And uh, yeah, it seems pretty good. All right, cool. <laughs> Look how short I am. So I usually set the uh, forward deceleration rate so that at a moderate speed, if I let go, it just, it just barely starts pushing me forward a little bit. All right, I'm happy. I thought about maybe just getting rid of this chair or like donating it or something, or maybe just taking parts off of it because I didn't think I was gonna be able to program the controller. The place that I go to get to, well, so, um, the mobility store that my friends own, they don't always have the programmers available. And well, anyways, there's been personnel changes and stuff and some of the programmers were, long story short, I, I wasn't able to get my hands on one. So getting rid of a chair like this, uh, just for parts seems like a waste. So at least now I can sell this thing if I decide I need to. The next few days here are gonna be somewhat critical uh, with living situation moving forward. I've got things pretty much squared away, I think. Uh, I'll know more by the end of this week. But again, sorry, I, I can't explain a lot of what was going on. This last weekend, however, drove out to Idaho again to help a friend move some stuff out there. They got the keys to their new place, so that's awesome. Gonna be making a few more trips out there with them uh, over the next couple of months, just helping them get things moved in. They're not actually leaving Portland for another couple of months. Uh, work related stuff but yeah it's always nice to get out and take a little road trip and do some things but anyways I'm gonna get out of this chair because my 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 knees are almost touching my chin <laughs> and uh, yeah we're gonna see what else is going on today this is uh, this is a video where I haven't uploaded in four and a half days and I need to upload something uh, yeah <laughs> I'll be back all right, let's check in with our batteries out in the garage. I found the manual charger and it's been out here, in theory, cramming voltage into one of these batteries. I guess we can turn on the light. That's the computerized charger. Those aren't good at pulling things back from nothing. At least we do have one volt in here, so eh. Looks like our needle's moved up a little bit. I'm gonna disconnect one of these terminals and if that needle moves at all, it'll tell us if anything's actually happening. So here we go. Yeah, see how it dropped down a tiny bit? And when I connect it back up, it goes up a little bit. 
Usually with batteries like this when I'm recovering them, after a few hours of being connected with this manual charger, we'll start getting, oh, actually we got some sparks. I was just going to say, we usually start getting sparks and that's a good sign. Check it out. Yeah, see? Itty bitty sparks. Cool. So in my experience recovering batteries, once you get to the point within like an hour or two and you start seeing those sparks, that means the batteries are probably going to be okay. We got to get them charged up a lot further before we know if there's any shorted cells. But because these things were functional, they've been completely dead for a few months. I think the seating controller powered off at like maybe three volts or something and wasn't pulling any more power. But anyways, just from the amount of times I've recovered batteries, this tells me that we should be all right. Hopefully by tomorrow we'll know for sure. All right, I needed to get out for a little bit. So it turns out the mass exodus continues. Another group of friends in my same circles, their family is also looking at leaving Portland. Well, they don't, well, it's construction. <laughs> they don't uh, actually live directly in Portland, but they're kind of in the metro area. They're looking at leaving Oregon altogether. As the days goes on, go on, eh. as the days go on, it seems like more and more people I know are just like fed up and they're like, yeah, okay, we're done. And a lot of the people I know are self-employed, work in trade work, construction, um, engineering, things like that. And the way things have been going around here, it, uh, it's not conducive to sticking around, we'll just say. I'm not, I'm not gonna get into the politics of anything, but it's the climate here is not something that is worth sticking around for. Anyways, I'm headed out right now to look at a box truck they are looking at buying. He figured buying a box truck is gonna be easier than renting trailers, and you know, if you got a 26 foot truck, you can just put all your stuff in there and makes things a lot easier. I actually used to do that myself anytime I moved. I would buy some sort of cube van or box truck or something like that, use it for the move, fix a few things on it, sell it for the same amount I paid for it, or maybe a little bit more, and it works out being better. It's got the 7.8 liter inline six cylinder diesel, turbo diesel engine. Those engines are actually really cool. It's a DT-466, so it's got the Huey injection system. That's the high pressure oil pump system, but it's not starting. It was advertised as starting, but random things, this and that, it won't fire up. They've tried a few things to get it running. It will actually fire up on starting fluid, though on those particular engines, you don't want to run them on starting fluid or ether for very long. It will kind of idle, but there's a few little electronic things that I'm pretty familiar with on those engines. So I'm gonna head out there and take a look. I've got a spare cam position sensor. We're gonna try plugging in there and see if that makes a difference. But anyways, once again, I just wanted to get out of the house, go do some uh, mindless repair work. Well, not mindless, but for me, I can just kind of sit back and be on autopilot and diagnose something and see if we can get it running. I'm getting the feeling though, the truck came from some guy that bought it sight unseen and then he decided to sell it for some reason. He's in some other state, the truck's in an auction lot. I'm getting the feeling that it's gonna be one of those things we should probably just pass up on. The price was a little bit cheap for what it is and after talking to them out there on the phone, I think I'm starting to understand why. Anywho, I'm gonna stop and grab some food real quick and then we're gonna see if we can get this thing running or if it's worth buying, I don't know, whatever. We're sitting in the Burger King drive-thru now. I found here as far as like uh, food for the dollar, I just get two Whoppers for six bucks and you can peel the buns off, grab a fork and you can have sort of a, I don't know, bunless burger or whatever. The Carl's Jr. ones are a lot better because they actually do burgers as a lettuce wrap and you don't need a fork to eat those, but there isn't a Carl's Jr. around here. So we're just gonna go this route for now, I think. Such quality this food is. <laughs> doing some looking around at that truck. It had some sort of like satellite based fleet tracking immobilizer thing built into it. It was plugged into the OBD port. I couldn't immediately tell how the thing was wired in. And since it's in an auction lot, they don't really like you tearing into wiring. The thing cranked over fine. And 
I couldn't tell if we were actually getting the signal to the Huey pump to fire up the injectors or not. It would start on ether and kind of idle, but I wasn't sure if it was residual ether that it was running on. Anyways, long story short, we decided just to pass on it. Those injection systems either work perfectly or they go seriously wrong. And when you start getting into the high pressure oil pumps on those, it becomes expensive in a hurry. A lot of times it's almost impossible to actually even take them apart without causing damage and then having to buy a bunch of parts just to get it back and find out that you need a $1,300 thing to get it going. So for the price of the truck and all the unknowns and everything, he just decided to pass on it. I forgot, this coffee cup makes weird noises. I think the two insulating layers have a leak at the top and every time I take a drink out of it, it cools down the air and starts making sounds. Anyways, so yeah, I've gotten messages from a few of you guys asking if I'm, if I'm all right. Things are going all right. I'm just kind of making a push right now to simplify my life moving forward and eliminate unknown variables or at least get rid of a lot of things that I don't have control over. I can assure you everything is going fine and we're going to land in a spot that, well, it'll be good. Trust me. It's just a lot of work to get there. And I mean, I don't know. It, it just takes a while to kind of figure out in life what you want to do or what you're doing. Not, I don't know, that sounds kind of weird. Well, let's just say after X number of years, I've decided it, it got, I got to simplify everything. I keep, li I keep getting into these weird living situations where I keep getting booted out and things keep happening. And yes, this house is not too long from now is going to be deemed uninhabitable. Therefore, I must leave. The reason I keep getting into situations like this, I think, is because I end up renting houses from random people that own them instead of management companies. Now, management companies can have their positives and negatives as well, but looking back on things, I always rent stuff from people like this place. It's a weird layout, and you never know who you're getting into business with. Sometimes it works out fine, sometimes it doesn't. Or like the last house, for example, worked fine for a couple of years until it didn't. <laughs> so anyways, just working on getting some things together. There's going to be a lot more interesting stuff coming up here soon. Sometime this weekend should be some interesting things happening. I might do a live stream sometime during the weekend. I don't know. We'll see. We're still going to have the one on Thursday like normal. But yes, lots of exciting things. We're going to call that good for now. Hopefully you enjoyed. And um, yeah, as per usual, leave your comments down below. And I'll catch you in a few days. Thanks for watching.